Welcome back to The Lemon Factor. I'm Chad, and today I have yet another dyno test for our 2019 Mazda Miata RF GT. Yes, I know a couple weeks ago we did a dyno video. We put the project car on a Mustang dynamometer, and while I enjoyed that experience, there were a couple aspects of the results that I was not too happy with. So uh, just to clarify, it wasn't the numbers. We are looking to get a baseline so that we can use that information to compare it as we test the various aftermarket exhaust. So we want to see how much gains we have from an axle back, from adding a mid pipe, and then in the future for whatever else we do to the car. So it is really important to me to make sure that we get a nice clean baseline. And I say the word clean because although overall the experience, uh, the last time we dyno the car with the Mustang dynamometer was okay, I didn't as feel as though the information that was charted, so the actual chart itself, and quite frankly, I just, I wasn't satisfied. The information kind of seemed to be all over the place. Uh, the charting, the mapping of the horsepower and the torque curves. I've never had a car tested on a Mustang dynamometer, so I don't know if that's inherent. This is what you can expect. Uh, my experience has always been with a dyno jet. I was looking for something that was a little cleaner in the results. So what I decided to do was to take the car to a, another dyno, and this time, to a dyno jet and have the car dyno tested there. Let's see if we can get a cleaner mapping of our horsepower and torque. And that's exactly what I did. So if you're interested to see the latest results, round two of our baseline testing, then stay tuned. Welcome back. Before we begin, don't forget to subscribe, turn on notifications, like and share, leave a comment below, let me know what you thought of this new updated test. And for those of you who haven't seen uh, the initial dyno testing on the Mustang dynamometer, take a look. I'll put the link in the description below. Go to the YouTube page, take a look at the videos, you'll find it there. And also take a look at the video I put together introducing our new exhaust video series for our Mazda Miata. This video, I simply go into what we're looking at accomplishing uh, in our new exhaust video series. And this is probably considered the, the first or second. Uh, the first of the series would be the baselining of our project car. And technically, I guess we did that with the Mustang dynamometer, but now I think I'm gonna consider this one as our true baseline. Hint, hint, I was pretty happy with the results.
So suffice it to say, I was pretty happy with these results. And again, I'm not talking about the numbers. Of course, the numbers are different. We're, we had initially dynoed on a Mustang dynamometer. This time it's on a dyno jet. Typically a Mustang is gonna read lower. So I'm not talking about the fact that we have different numbers and higher numbers. I'm talking about the fact that now we have three. Actually, it's actually four. I didn't put the fourth run on there, but we had four solid consistent runs where the horsepower were, was right in line with one another. The first one, the very first run I, I did, the horsepower came out to, I believe, 167. However, we weren't able to capture the torque, so I didn't publish that, and I, I actually did film it, but I didn't put it into this video. But we actually have four solid runs back to back in which the horsepower was very consistent. And then if you take a look at the torque, the three within the video here, they're spot on. So I think we really have some nice data to work with. One thing I didn't mention was the last time we dynoed on the Mustang, I did ask for air fuel ratios, but when I got the results, it, it just looked like crap. I mean, I didn't know what to, to make of it. So I didn't put it in the video. I wasn't going to use it. But this time, as you can see, the air fuel ratios were very consistent as well, gave us some nice data that we can use in the future as we're modifying the car. And then it further reinforced the fact that the ND2, at least the ND2, I don't know about the ND1, but at least the ND2 R car, that the red line is variable. It is not a 7,500 RPM red line. As we found with the last uh, dyno run on the Mustang, and consistent with this dyno run on the dyno jet, the car shuts off prior to the 7,500 RPM red line, the fuel cutoff. The red line realistically in third and fourth and fourth gear is actually 7,200 RPMs. So I've looked into this, I've got varying information. Now I haven't validated any, any, any of this, but some people seem to indicate that one, it could be due to the fact that Mazda has built in a break-in period where you can't go higher than that until the car's broken in. Quite frankly, I don't buy that because I don't know what the big difference is between 7,500 RPMs and 7,200. I mean, yes, it's 300 RPM, 300 RPMs, but that just doesn't make sense to me. What I think makes more sense and which is consistent with if you look at the actual tachometer on the Miata where it has red hashes before it goes solid, it does indicate variable. And what I've also seen was some people say, hey, it's only in certain gears that it can reach 7,500 RPM red line before the fuel cuts off. In other gears, it's lower, i.e. the 7,200. And that does seem consistent. But for those of you, before you jump in with the comments and say, hey, you shut it down too early. I mean, take a look at it. We ran it right to the 7,500 RPM red line. The car cut it off early and consistently cut it off early. All three runs at 7,200 RPM. So uh, we were able to confirm that. Hope you enjoyed this and until next time.